Hello, this is Northwest Trains, and as you can see, I've got um, a new addition to the Garden Railway, and uh, it's a LGB loco. Uh, I'll just quickly show you, give you a clue what it is and the number. Uh, this is a made in Germany model, so uh, I'm going to get out the box now and uh, see what it looks like. Okay, we've got our loco out the box now. Just quickly have a little run through. So this is the supposedly the service instructions that we get with the loco. Um, very basic, really. Most of it's in different languages, as you can see. That's why it's a thick looking booklet. So this loco's got um, a number switch on it. We'll take a look at that in a sec. It's got a um, power control socket for um, coach lighting. We see here we've got numbers one to three. So. Again, we'll have a look at that, but if we have, I think it's say setting zero or one, the loco will remain static, so another loco can run, but the smoke and the lights will stay on, which is a nice little feature. Uh, that's what I'm guessing because my other engines are like that, without reading it too too much. Um, there's not much anything else helpful here, really. I suppose it gives you some info on the prototype loco here, so you can pause that if you like. Um, the model itself, weather resistant construction, usual stuff for LGB, it's MTS fitted as standard, so it works for digital as well as analog. Four way power control switch, protected gearbox with seven pole Bueller motor. We've got six powered wheels, one traction tyre. So it's going to be interesting how this copes with the steep gradients of my layout. Um, I'm hoping it's not going to struggle too much and at least pull two coaches. So we've got the length, the weight, the weight is 2,600 grams, or just a, uh, five and a half pounds. So it's pretty weighty. Uh, that's not too much more on here, I don't think. So it's got cleaning lubrication. The axle bearings and the side rod ends should be lubricated occasionally. So things like this, I wouldn't mind seeing a diagram from, uh, especially people that aren't too, uh, you know, loco savvy like me, you know. Um, the experienced people won't have a problem but yeah I'll have a good look at that and we'll see what needs to do into it in the future so quickly moving on uh, in fact I just uh, have to scrub out something because uh, this is a bit of a document the previous owner sent to me I've just scrubbed out his uh, address on it right so he's uh, kindly sent me this so this is, we look on the HSD Navigator Railway Museum, so this must be off their website. And this is the actual loco I've got here. So we can see the difference. We've got a, a handrail here. It doesn't, uh, I presume there's one there. This tank looks a bit chunkier than that, and it looks straight. We haven't got the black line here. Uh, we haven't got the big headlamps like uh, I thought we wouldn't. Uh, this looks pretty similar, the chimney looks similar and you can notice on here that this uh, swivels across I'm not too sure whether that's in real life to keep the rain out or not but I'll have to remember to open up and put the, uh, the smoke on so basically gives you information about the logo so and again this is a reason why I wanted this logo because it actually runs in this country and it's hard to find um, British outline G scale ready to run logos this is technically French made, well it is French made, but it ran in this country, or Wales, uh, for most of its career. So we've got more info there, so if you just want to pause it and take a look. So here we go, this engine is an extremely rare example of a French built locomotive used to British industry. So it's a long term uh, loan to the Navigate Railway Trust, and its present owner. So um, it's, uh, it's had quite a long career looking at it, uh, looks like it was in service until 1959 which um, I, mean, I didn't even know there was any meter gauge railways here still running them, there's a few more pictures of the actual logo, you can see a few different uh, differences in it, let me just spin it backwards again to take a look, so we've got a nice little driver figure there. So we've got the nice open cab, I suppose the difference being that's like a white or cream colour and ours is red and black. 
Um, got the same little details here. Obviously, you wouldn't have this socket. But you know, overall, wheels look similar. I really like the red on the uh, the, the driving rods. So that's that paperwork out of the way. Let's just have a close look at the loco. So we'll start at the back. So we've got these bits on the LG locos tend to bend and snap, but that's not too bad. I really like the finish on this loco. The colour's really nice. One thing that attracted me to it. And then um, we've got the usual centre buffer, hook coupler. And uh, so this is the power socket. So uh, what you can do is fit the coaches with an LGB lighting system. It's quite a, a um, crude way of doing it by having cables running through each coach, but it's nice and easy. It takes two minutes with a screwdriver, two little screws. So we can see the controls we got in here. Everything's painted gold. The rest of it's still black mainly. Let me just see if I can tilt this up a little bit. Got a nice little bit of glaze in there, but I mean that's just one. <laughs> From inside it's a plastic sheet, but outside it looks pretty good. And um, we can see the control switch here it's quite easy to get to having the open cab compared to other locos um, let's just see if we can spin it round again see that's from the side I think it's a lovely stunning looking loco see like I like all this and the red as well matching livery looks very smart and it looks in perfect condition because it is a second hand model and I imagine it's over 10 years old it looks like it's been well looked after let me just take a look the front here, the glazing looks pretty smart from the outside, doesn't it? And um got all the uh let me just pick up my paintbrush, got all the piping detail along here, got the little rail handrails on the front here. And the lamps don't look too bad, even though they, they are pretty big. Let's just have a look at that. And um but having the livery is what sets the logo off really. I've seen a few different variants of this, but this is definitely my favourite. And uh, like I say, I hope it's Cover, uh, it copes with the gradients of my layouts okay because I've got quite a sharp gradient I'm working on trying to make it a bit gentler but overall it's still pretty uh, pretty steep let's just have a little look underneath it is quite a weighty model I think uh, it's five and a half pounds something like that so um, look under there the contacts need a good clean or maybe even replacing the wheels are pretty clean spotless We've got a traction tyre there, we can see the loco number, but there's no uh, visible damage or scratches underneath, so it does look like this loco hasn't seen much action in the garden, it looks like it's been ran indoors, I'm probably wrong, but either way, it looks like it's been well looked after. So what we're going to have to do now is, we're going to have to get it out in the garden, and uh, we're going to give it a good run, so um, hope you enjoyed the running session, and uh, We'll see how it goes. Back in a sec. Okay, we're all set up on the track, so uh, let's see how it goes. I'll just try moving off slowly first. It does quite a nice crawl, actually. Just try it in reverse. That's a pretty good start. Right, so I'm going to send it round the layout now and uh, I'll do a video of it going round on the uh, extension and see how it copes with the uh, sharp curves and the uh, steep slopes. And then we'll add some rolling stock to it. Right, so I've just got the loco on just over half speed now, just uh, giving it a run in as such. And uh, it's just about to take its first trip up the uh, steep gradient here. Let's see how it copes. Sorry about the lights anyway, I'm just trying to hold the camera while looking at the same time. It's coped with that okay. I don't know what it's going to be like when it's got some coaches or wagons behind it. Sorry about this glare, it's uh, very sunny here at the moment. Lovely day. Just not ideal for filming, I suppose. See, it's running fine at the moment. I'll run it the other way after. But yeah, I just wanted to see what it was like up here first. 
So we'll go around the other side of the layout and uh, see what it's like there. Just try and get an overall view of it running on the layout. I mean, it's a very smart looking loco, isn't it? Just coming down the uh, slope now. I think this is the bit it'll struggle on if it's going upwards. So also follow it around. I think it's doing all right. Not much smoke come out of it yet, but yeah, that just might be me not putting enough smoke fluid in. It says put half full on it, but I never want to put too much in because it doesn't work otherwise. Right, we'll run it backwards now, and then uh, we'll see what it's like going up the hill the other way, and uh, we'll start getting some rolling stock out. Okay, let's see how it gets on with uh, two coaches. Okay, I'm going to take it up the hill now with two coaches, see how it does. No, it's fine. To be honest, it's managed then. Much better than I uh, thought. Let's see this final little steep bit here. No, let's manage that all right. I'm quite pleased with that. Because uh, it's never really going to pull more than two coaches anyway, because it's only a small running line. I think that looks pretty good though. Those coaches go nice with it as well. They're off the old uh, 100th anniversary train set. Now we're going to test the uh, loco on the incline now, see how it does. I think it might struggle to be honest. Yeah, almost got stuck. In fact, it has got stuck. To help it along. We'll have to try and work on this incline a bit. That's only two coaches. The rest of it seems fine. It's definitely going to have to take the other route up. A gentler slope. I did use second radius curves here as well. But so uh, it's a little bit disappointing. Um I see my stains engine works perfect on the incline with two coaches. So uh, I'll show an example of that in a sec. But you would think the bigger heavier loco would be better at inclines. Well, it's just about made at this time. I think it'll improve when I make it DCC so that I can change the speed to suit the slope and going uphill and downhill. So we'll do a few more shots of it running, see how it does. Okay, I've swapped the two coaches for two lighter wagons and uh, I think it just about does it now, let's just see. It does struggle. 
palm plants in the way, but it has made it to the top. So I think in general it's better running the other way. But well, level track, it's perfectly fine, and uh, it is a very steep gradient, so I can't really fault the local on that. Just run past the stains here. The smoke unit's working now as well, so uh, I'll do a few more running shots of it, running around the layout, and uh, include the uh, unboxing. Okay, um, I brought the loco back indoors. Uh, overall, it's not too bad. It stalled on a couple of occasions. It struggled on a few of the uh, the gradients. It would still pull two coaches um, one way reasonably easily. The other side, it did struggle a little bit. Um, I do think I do need to replace the contacts on it though because it did uh, suffer a little bit, a few dead spots, and it kept on stalling. Um, my little 040 stains loco um, just glides over it all so that tells me you know there's something not um, perfect about the contacts maybe on this but um, I think more running in a um, bit more adjusting to the railway and uh, this loco will be just fine like I say really uh, really like it it was worth the money considering how much a double O gauge loco can cost now it's still a very good model the smoke got better as well as it went along, but I think, you know, at, at first it's probably just me not putting enough fluid in or, you know, it'll, uh, I think it'll get better over time. And, uh, but yeah, let me know what you think um, of this loco and if you've got them in your garden, what yours like on the um, gradients, if you, if you have any again, or pulling power. Um, on straight and level track, this would easily pull four or five coaches, I think. But um, on my layout, um, two coaches would be the max, I think. I just about get three coaches on the Stains loco uh, going up the gradients. But yeah, overall, I'm uh, very happy with it. Uh, 
so um we should see plenty more running sessions of this in the future and um like i say again please drop me a comment let me know what you think and uh take a look at my other garden alley videos and um check out the facebook page i always put more pictures up there of uh what i get up to with the garden and the model railways so um thanks again for watching and um keep an eye out for the next video bye for now